Wu Yu threatened Hezia, saying that if he left home, she would report him to the property management for child abuse. She took Hezia back to her place and hinted that by the count of three, Hezia would knock on her door. Sure enough, Hezia came to knock on the door and took Hezia back home. Hezia instructed the smart assistant to make him a cup of coffee, but it didn't respond. He was then forced to call the assistant by the name Wu Yudao to get it to make the coffee. Hezia quickly went to bring the coffee over. Hezia then asked Hezia to change the assistant's name and voice back to the original. However, Hezia lied, saying the computer was broken and couldn't be changed. Chu Minjiao took the initiative to invite Wu Yu to lunch together. Wu Yu, feeling nervous, repeatedly explained that her work had not made any progress yet. However, Chu Minjiao, usually cold and distant, surprisingly reassured her not to feel pressured, showing a much warmer side. At the shareholders' meeting, Hezia proposed the development of new products, emphasizing that they should not be limited to the current offerings. He also suggested gradually freeing themselves from dependence on e-commerce platforms by establishing their own sales platform. The shareholders had mixed opinions, but they all unanimously demanded that Hezia quickly deliver profits. Hezia assigned Liang Kuai to manage the company's operations, saying he wanted to spend a few days properly taking care of Hezia. Hezia took Hezia shopping for clothes. Hezia tried on several outfits, and he looked great and handsome in all of them. However, after seeing the price tags, he said, Bro, the clothes in this store aren't really for me. Let's go to the next store. Hezia then turned to the salesperson and said, Wrap up all the clothes he tried on. I'll buy them. Huang Jianan specially ordered a globally limited edition diamond ring to propose to Lu Man. He went to Lin Qing beforehand to show him the ring and asked Lin Qing to record the entire proposal for him. Lin Qing couldn't refuse and reluctantly took his phone. When Huang Jianan proposed to Lu Man, she responded, Stand up, I don't like you. Stop proposing to me. Then, seeing Lin Qing holding the phone and recording, Lu Man asked, What are you doing? Even something this boring, you're involved in. Hezia tried hard to please Hezia always calling him brother affectionately. Hezia told him, Stop calling me brother. My mom only has one son. Feeling hurt, Hezia replied sadly, You know, I treat our mom like my real mother. Then he turned and walked away. When Hezia returned home, he couldn't find Hezia anywhere, and his calls went unanswered. He began to worry, repeatedly dialing his number, but still received no response. Growing increasingly anxious, he was in a state of panic. At that moment, Wu Yu arrived to discuss contract matters. Upon learning that Hezia had left home, Wu Yu offered to accompany Hezia to search for him. Hezia and Wu Yu arrived at the park when they suddenly heard that someone had fallen into the water. Hezia mistakenly thought it was Hezia and rushed over to check. To his surprise, he found that it was actually Hezia who had jumped into the water to save the drowning person. He was performing first aid and successfully revived the person. Hezia hurriedly took off his jacket and draped it over Hezia, who smiled gratefully, feeling reassured. After much consideration, Hezia decided to buy a ticket the next day to send Hezia back to his hometown. However, Hezia insisted on staying to participate in the admission exam for Huangzhong University before leaving. Reluctantly, Hezia agreed to let him stay. Cousin was about to take her son back to their hometown, and Lin Yueda bought many gifts, asking her not to tell his parents about it. His cousin reminded him once again not to indulge Qian Ji, so she wouldn't take advantage of him. Lin Yueda immediately stopped her, repeatedly emphasizing that he and Qian Ji were already married, and that they should love and care for each other, so there was no question of anyone being bullied. Just then, Qian Ji returned home and felt warmth in her heart upon hearing Lin Yueda's words. His cousin kept apologizing to Qian Ji and urged them to have a baby soon, prompting Lin Yueda to hurriedly pull his cousin away. Hezia sought help from Wu Yu, expressing his desire to give Hezia a memorable birthday and asking her to help him find a way to delay his return to his hometown for a few days. Wu Yu agreed to do everything she could to assist him. After seeing off his cousin and nephew, Lin Yueda tidied up the house and even bought gifts to put in Qian Ji's cabinet. 
He asked Qian Ji to check out the results of his efforts and promised that he wouldn't let anyone else stay at their home. He pleaded with her to move back in as soon as possible, and Qian Ji readily agreed. While tidying up the room, Lin Yuedo found a man's shirt. Qian Ji lied, saying it was left by her ex-boyfriend, which made Lin Yuedo feel a pang of jealousy. Qian Ji then had to admit that the shirt was actually bought specifically for him. Excited, Lin Yuedo hurried to try it on. Liang Kui complained to Lin Qing that He Zia had been coming home very early lately and wondered if he was being taken care of by the neighbor, Aunt Ma. Lin Qing then asked Liang Kui for advice on how to pursue a girl. Sensing something was off, Liang Kui pressured him to reveal who he had a crush on. After managing to escape the conversation, Lin Qing paid the bill and left. Lin Yue Da took his things out of the bedroom, and Qian Ji asked him, Where are you taking them? He replied, My cousin has left, so I'm taking them back to my room. Qian Ji said, Don't take them back, just stay here. Lin Yue Da asked, If I stay here, then what about you? Disappointed, Qian Ji turned and walked away. Just as Sophie was about to go out, she was suddenly ambushed by Yang Zijiang who pushed her back into the room. Su Xingai, not seeing Sophie arrive for her live stream, kept calling her phone, but there was no answer. He rode his bike to her building, shouting Sophie's name and knocking on the door. Unable to respond because her mouth was covered, Sophie couldn't answer. Su Xingai then decided to go look for Wu Yu. Yang Zijiang was released from prison and wanted to live with Sophie, but she firmly refused. In response, he bound her up, attempting to force her into submission. Wu Yu was at Hezia's house keeping Hezia company when the doorbell rang. She went to open the door and saw it was Suang Zingai. Su Zingai anxiously exclaimed, Where could Sophie be? I've checked all the places I could think of. Wu Yu replied, Could it be that she's been kidnapped? Hezia interjected, She must be at home. Su Zingai questioned, If she's at home, why isn't she opening the door? Wu Yu said, let's go to her house again. I have the code to her door. Yang Zijiang threatened Sophie to agree to his demands, but she firmly refused and even kicked him with her foot. Infuriated by her resistance, he grabbed her by the neck and shook her violently. Wu Yu, Su Zingai, Hezia, and Hezia hurried to Sophie's house and found the front door locked from the inside. Hezia kicked the door open and they discovered Yang Zijiang holding Sophie hostage with a fruit knife. Su Xingai tried to reason with Yang Zijiang, urging him to put down the knife and relax, insisting that he and Sophie were a perfect match. He encouraged Sophie to agree to be with Yang Zijiang, suggesting that he should remove the cloth binding her mouth so she could respond. As Yang Zijiang lowered his guard, Hezia and Su Xingai seized the opportunity to rush in and subdue him.